live martial arts class. You're gonna get training fast with these nunchucks. You're gonna look like Bruce Lee. Whatever you wanna do, you're gonna learn how to use this nunchuck or nunchako in this fast martial arts weapons lesson. Start with a chuck in the middle of one hand. Make sure the string, or the chain in this case, is coming out the thumb side. You're gonna start by dropping it back and pulling it up over the shoulder. It's just a warm up move. You wanna get the blood flowing in the wrists, elbows, shoulder, keep your body safe from injury. This is also gonna double as a strike when you start to speed it up. It's a very effective weapon because you can hit so hard with it. Just this stick comes flying out of this chain and it's in this other hand. So this is your warm up move. Your elbow comes up and down. Move number one, in this fast martial arts weapons lesson with the nunchuck. Then, in the same hand, I want you to bring it to that shoulder and bring it across the body. This uh, warming up with strikes is really important in this weapon because so many people do spins and all this cool stuff and you're spinning and you're doing all this stuff, which is awesome, right? But you wanna understand that first and foremost, this is a very effective street fight self-defense weapon because it has so much power. So we warm up with strikes. I do that intentionally. I always want you to learn how to use the weapon, not just the way it looks fancy and fun, but how to fight with it. How to defend yourself if you need to. So the first one is just down and back, speeding up when you're ready. And then the second one is across the body. And it's this angle here. Think about temple to cheek. I'm just going through. This is where if he has something in his hand or she's coming at you with a knife, just knock that hand out of the way. And you have a lot of speed and power in this other stick. So from here, I just go across the body. That's number two in the warm up. Number three, starting from the opposite hip, coming over to this hip. I'm just bringing it out and back. And not just to warm up the shoulders and the arms, which it's gonna do, but as a strike. I'm striking and I'm striking. This is just a horizontal strike from here to here, but I'm keeping my hand facing down. I want you to use that here in a minute. At some point, if you want to learn how to use these things like Bruce Lee, it's good to see you again, then you have to learn this move, okay? This is the basic, basic Bruce Lee stuff. So I'm coming across the body and back. Across and back. I've warmed up this side, I put it in the other one, and I start down and up. Same thing. 30 seconds on this strike. Your second strike in this fast martial arts weapons lesson. It's across the body and back at this angle. And again, think about striking the targets, the face, their hand, got something in the hand, knock it out of the way. And number three, cross the body and back. 30 seconds each strike, bring it back into the other hand, and now I want you to spin. First, this orbital to the outside of the body. This is my right hand, the string side, or in this case, the chain, comes out of the thumb. Let me show you, I'm just kind of cranking it around. See how slowly I can go. You can see this motion. This is forward, this is reverse. And you have three ranges of motion, three uh, distances. Think about distance. This is small, that means it's isolated in your wrist. Forward, but then there's the elbow. That's a reverse, and that's forward. I like to warm up with all three ranges. Now these three ranges are important. When I'm here, when I'm at this small range, it's the fastest. When I'm here, and I grab the back of the chuck and I'm using my whole arm. That's the third range, by the way. Using that arm, using that arm, I have the most power, devastating power to strike and defend myself. But you have to know all three ranges. The first one, wrist, second, elbow, third, the arm. It's that obvious, right? So go back to this outer orbital spin, turn your palm over and do the same thing. Make sure your arm is extended far enough that you're not gonna bust yourself in the face. With these metal chucks, you feel it, right? With those big old style wooden chucks, you feel it. Some of the foam stuck chucks, I put a link in the section below if you wanna get a starter pair. Unfortunately, you can make your own pair though, make your own pair if you can. But if you need to buy some, most states, they'll make you start with the, they'll only sell you the, uh, the foam chucks. But that's a good, they're a good starter pair. So you're outside, Inside, ah, super simple, right? You've got a knife, I've got this. If I let you get close enough, you're gonna chop me all up, you're gonna stab me, 
you know, lacerate my guts, I'm dead. So from here, I just smash that thing right out of your hand. The chain that's in the middle is not to block the knife. A lot of times it's just a string. The ones that I made as a kid, they all had string. Most of them have string. The chain is not to, you can, let's say your hand is here. There's a way to wrap up the hand and you twist it like this and break it out like that and maybe pull the knife out of their hand. But I'm not gonna try all those intricate moves because you can stab me. I'm just gonna swing away, right? I'm swinging away. So that's really the purpose. If I take the chain out and I attach it, it just becomes a stick. It's the same as a collie stick. I have that collie stick or a screamer or a nice short martial arts stick. Then I have leverage and I have length between me and you. The chain just makes it move in a different way. It accelerates this other one here. I add a couple of spins in there. Now I'm creating kinetic energy or stored energy in this chuck. I put a couple of swings and then I add that from here and I add that into the strike. Now I have more power coming in. So that's really the purpose of having the two sticks and the string in the middle, or in this case, the chain and the purpose of our intent of this weapon. So it's, yeah, it is, it's a really cool weapon. It's really fun and of all the weapons that I used as a kid growing up and learned how to use, this is the one that I hit myself with the most. Um, that's, uh, so you learn fat, I think you learn faster that way when you start hitting yourself. All right, so we had this outer orbital, we turned it in, inner orbital, out, in, and then I want you to put those together and now you have your figure eight. Also, learning how to use this weapon will help you with all other weapons. All the martial arts weapons move in similar ways at certain levels. So now I'm spinning in this figure eight, or an infinity spin, endless spin, just side to side, and then I want you to reverse it and pull it up, pull it up. And that would be the outer, the outer orbital here, but instead of, this is where we did, we were here before, now you're just pulling it back. So now you just pull it back, turn your hand over, and again, make sure your arm is out. If it's in, that's gonna smash you right in the face, which is okay. If you learn that way, if you're the kind of person that needs to be smashed in the face a little bit to learn, I, I, I'm that kind of person. Allow yourself to learn the hard way. If that helps you learn faster, palm out, palm down, palm up, palm down, and then I'm in, this is my reverse uh, figure eight. Do the same thing on the other side, 30 seconds, doing this, palm up, Palm down, palm up, palm down, up and down. 30 seconds here, and then reverse it, pulling this way. Uh, I don't know, I disagree. I grew up with a, a father who was a painter, a house painter, and uh, I grew up with all these old master painters from like the European tradition, especially like the Germans, Meister meaning somebody who has mastered the basics. Not that you have to bow to me, that's not what master means. Not that I'm above you, that's not what master means. Master means I have a mastery, mastery. I've done it, you know they say like 10,000 times. I'm sure I've done every move 10,000 times each. Not all moves, but of the moves that I've mastered as a black belt, 10,000 times each. And to me that's what master means. See, when I think of teacher, I think of my uh, the fourth grade teacher, who was a uh, really nasty person. I think of my eighth grade teacher, uh, my ninth grade, 10th grade, 10th grade English teacher who couldn't spell half the words that she was trying to have me spell. And she'd always mark out my, because I was good at spelling, she'd mark out my correctly spelled. Anyway, that's what I think of. When I think of teacher, I think of that. And so I have a negative connotation with teacher. Uh, you have a negative connotation with master. Neither one of us is right, neither one of us is wrong, it's just different. Um, that's why I really don't go by master this or master. I really, I've never had anybody call me master. I've never asked anybody to. Somebody has, sometimes people call me sensei. In Guatemala, they, Guatemala, they call me sensei because that's part of their understanding of uh, the martial arts. Call everybody sensei who does martial arts. Um, only one I've never been called is sifu or guru. No one calls me guru either. I'm not a guru. Um, good. I mean, you, you, don't, you, you do or you don't. It doesn't matter. But I want you to understand this. When we say master, it's not like a hierarchy. Master is somebody who's mastered the basic moves, like a master painter, a master craftsman, a master carpenter, 
somebody who can then teach the next level, the journeyman. And then the journeyman, they teach the apprentice. Or maybe it's the other way around, I forget. Maybe it's apprentice, journeyman, master. And the journeyman's in there doing the work, and then he becomes a master. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Hank, I appreciate it very much. All right, so we have this figure eight. We did it on both sides. We did it forward and backward. I want to put some moves together in combination in this fast martial arts lesson. I want to go one, two, three, and then when it's here, I'm going to reach in front of my body. This is really important because it feels intuitive. You, you're going to try to reach behind your back sometimes. Make sure you're just in front of your body and you just grab it. That's all this is. I bring this up here, reach across, pull it to this side. Then I'm going to do that same combo. One, two, three. I call that the Bruce Lee triangle. And the only reason I call it the Bruce Lee triangle is because a lot of Bruce Lee movies, he does this really fast, really fast. He goes from side to side really fast. They get really close in the camera angles. He has in those awesome screams he does. And then he does a couple of spins, pops under his elbow, bam, and he smashes somebody. And then there was that cool uh, camera commercial from, uh, I think, Germany, where he's uh, playing uh, ping pong. You've seen that one? He's playing ping pong. And then there's ones where he's lighting matches on fire. And they say later, I always thought that was real. I guess it's not real. Yeah, those are his camera tricks. But still, he probably could have. I don't know. All right. Anyway, so we have one, two, three, and then here. One, two, three. Thank you. I, I don't know if I deserve it, but I appreciate it. One, two, three. Comes down here. And here's the key. Wherever you point this part of this chuck, that's where the other part's going to go. If you point this at an angle, you just whack yourself straight across your spine from here or right on your shoulder blades. That always feels good. When you start to go in the opposite direction where you're coming up this way, right? That's the next move, next level. If you, instead of pointing it straight up to the ceiling, which makes it go straight up into your hand, if you point it, because it's the way our brains work, we're trying to see it instead of trusting ourselves. And I've done this for so long, I can trust myself, right? Um, I still make big mistakes. <laughs> Don't be fooled. Uh, even if I were the super grand, supreme grandmaster of the world, uh, gold belt. I know a guy who's got a gold belt. He's a ninja. And Tenth Don Soki, founder of American Ninja Jitsu or something. Um, a nice guy, super nice guy, nice kids, nice wife. His martial arts school used to be straight across the street from mine for years. Anyway, but um, a lot of guys make up their their Don or their rank and they get to a certain level and they're like, oh, well, I created all this stuff. I'm a Soki, which means founder in Japan, uh, Japanese. And now I'm a 10th degree. And my, oh, I'm just whack myself. My instructor is now, I guess I saw the other day, he's a 10th degree, the guy I trained with the longest. Um, good for him. He, he probably deserves it. More so than some of the other guys I've ever met. I've met a lot of guys. I met this guy named uh, Duke. He taught Duke Doe. Anyway, the point is, wherever I point this, that one's going to go. So if you want to not smash yourself in the head, focus on where this goes. Go slower, point it directly to the sky. And it will, can only go this way. If you turn it, turn it, turn it, because your brain needs to try to see it. And then, <laughs> yeah, I've seen this many times. This might be a good idea to start with the foam. I don't know. I never start with the foam. Um, you you want to try to see it. Bam. Smashes you right in the face. And I'm not laughing, but that's going to happen, right? So you bring it here to here when you go forward, and then just reverse it. Bring it here to here to here. And let's go back to that other Bruce Lee move, which is that outer orbital. You're going to do two, and then whack it inside. This we've done. We just did this at the beginning. This is the figure eight. If I bring it even tighter under my arm, I just open and close. Now when it's here, I'm gonna squeeze this to my body to create tension here, and then I start to pull here. And then, remember wherever you point this, that's where that's gonna go. Make sure you kind of point that at an angle so that when it comes out, it goes out this way and not into your knuckles or into your face, which is possible. So you go one, two, oh, there goes my thumb. One, two, and then under. One, two, under. Didn't catch it, one, two, under, one, two, that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, under. And then at the angle, pop it, right? You switch to this one. One, two, under, pop. So you do 30 seconds on each side, pop. 
one, two, under, squeeze it, and then pop. So you wanna go right into the face. One, two, under, pop. We all become our own man. It's impossible to be somebody else's man. We all become our own man after a while. I don't need any disciples or followers. I, understand, I think that's what you're saying, and I agree with you there. But just everybody's gotta find, figure it out their own way. Now, just my two cents. So come here, one, two, three, four, practice this for 30 seconds. After this, go back to here, and then add that move from side to side for 30 seconds. One, two, three, one, two, three, and then after 30 seconds here, come here, add the orbital, one, two, catch, pop. Switch hands to here, one, two, three, four, five, catch, pop. Now you're doing a combination of flow that you could do if you had to demonstrate or if you just want to practice a bunch of the techniques in combination. So you have this, the Bruce Lee triangle, two orbitals, catch under your armpit, create tension, pop them in the face, and then go to the other hand. There's your transfer. One, two, three. Oh, wait a minute. One, two, three, swing, swing, catch, pop, bring it to the other hand. Triangle. Orbital, catch, pop, other hand. Triangle, orbital, catch, pop, other hand. One last thing before we go, I'm gonna lower it just a little bit so you can see my hands. And this is going to be the wrist rolls, my favorite moves. I love to do, let me show you two more things, two more things, because we have time. This is a fast martial arts lesson. I'm talking fast, I'm moving fast. That gave us extra time. I'm gonna make a circle in front of my body. I'm gonna bring it a little bit closer first. It's just a circle in front of my body. I'm gonna think about an old school clock, right? The face, the face. there's a, uh, the shorter one's the hour, the long one is the minutes. I'm gonna think about 12 o'clock, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back to 12. At 11 o'clock, right before midnight, right before noon, I'm gonna let it go, and I'm gonna to try to catch it at one o'clock. So I'm gonna let it go here, catch it here, but it's gonna to have to spin. All right, if we have time today, we might have time, we'll do lightsaber. They're just in that corner. I've got to let the right shoulder rest though. I got to be smart. I'll just do everything with the left. All right, so I'm going to go one. I go slowly, take my time, let it go up here at 10 or 11, and then I try to catch it here at one. So I'm here, two, let it go, and catch. And when you let it go, you have to allow it to do a full spin before you catch it again. Your palm is going to be facing down when you catch it. So you bring it around, two, let it go, catch. One, two, let it go, catch. One, two, let it go. Then, with the other hand, you just reverse the clock. So now you're going counterclockwise. Left hand le uh, counterclockwise. So I'm going around the body, and I'm going to let it go at one, catch at 11, 10 or 11, somewhere in that range. So from here, let it go here, catch it, kind of out of control. One, two, one. And here's where you're gonna drop it a lot. You're gonna be worried about smacking yourself a lot. Just keep picking it up. The more you can calm yourself down, the better you'll get this one. And expect to drop it. Don't try to be perfect. Don't try to understand it. Just do it. From here, let it go. Catch it, let it go, catch. Then, go into your figure eight. Put your right foot forward, this is my right hand. And then on this side, I'm going to spin it, catch it, and then, Drop it, I still drop it all the time. So you go in one, two, spin it, catch it, bring it back out here, throw it, and catch it. One, two, throw it, catch it. One, two, throw it, and catch it. So now you can throw it and catch it on each side. Or you can go into your figure eight, throw it, catch it with the other hand, switch your feet, throw it, catch it. Eventually you'll be able to do it without looking at it. I'm still looking at it. One, two, throw it catch it one two throw it but just a little bit of practice and you'll be able to throw and catch it then the last one so from here my this is my right hand you can see how close i am to the tip or this uh, chain i bring it here open the hand gently turn this hand catch it now i'm in a negative grip think of a hammer this i guess this is a hammer think of the hammer in reverse i don't know all right, I don't know where I was going with that. All right, so in the right hand, see it? You called me master too soon. From here, bring it up. 
open, turn it. Now you're in the negative grip. So this is a positive grip in a forward figure eight, forward spin. I go to the opposite side of my right hand. When I go to the left side, I do that wrist roll. Now I'm in the negative grip. So now, uh, here's a Star Wars reference. It's uh, Soka Tano, right? Is that the, how you say it? And now I'm in that negative grip. Just dropped it. And then you go back into, yeah. So, so that, and I want you to be able to do cool stuff. I want you to be able to fight with it, knock things out. Someone's got a knife, knock it out of their hand. Um, do the Bruce Lee where you, you're out here, you look menacing, you defend yourself, get it, bam! And you hit him real fast. I want you to be able to do that. And I also want you to be able to do wrist roll to a wrist roll. Wrist roll, wrist roll. Just one side to the other side. And the more you do it, the easier it's gonna be. The uh, more you drop it and pick it up, the better you're gonna get. Don't expect to not drop it. Dropping it is a sign that you're getting out of your comfort zone. And you're starting to grow and learn some new stuff. That's called a growth mindset. I can't do it yet. If you keep going, you'll get it. But if you say I can't do it, you're done. You never try, your brain turns itself off. Can't do it yet means I'm gonna drop this thing a million times, I'm gonna pick it up, keep going, and eventually, through all that frustration and pain and lumps and bruises, because you're gonna get a lot of those with this, I'm gonna eventually get really good at it. I'm proud of myself. You want real confidence or real self-esteem? Don't let somebody tell you how wonderful and smart and beautiful you are. Uh, you know, the whole snowflake thing that everybody whines about now. And by the way, all those old people talk, talking about snowflakes, they made the snowflakes. My generation made them and the generation before me. So they should all just shut up, right? Uh, they did the damage. Maybe they need to uh, look in the mirror, right? It's all about this though. Smack yourself over and over again. Can't do it yet. Keep trying. And then when you're able to do it, you're going to feel good about yourself because you will have earned the skill, the ability, not in theory, not because someone told you how wonderful and smart and beautiful and how perfect you are, but because you had the blood, sweat and tears and everything ached and hurt and your hands got blisters and then they got calluses and then the skin came off and some blood here and there and you smacked yourself in your eye and your eye was black and swollen up like that. Looked like Bell's palsy. I've been watching the strong man in that half your Bjornsson, Bjornsson or whatever, the mountain. Got the Bell's palsy. I'm not making fun of him, I'm just thinking about it, right? Think about the last time I smacked myself in the eye. My eye swelled up and I, ha and I could only look out of a little uh, slit. And it came from, not this one, but the other one that I have, which is even heavier, metal. They're no joke. All right, so that's it. That's what you practice. Practice your circles, throw and catch, and then back and forth from one hand to the other hand, and then go into wrist rolls, wrist rolls, but not right away. Start with the Bruce Lee triangle, one, two, three, the outer orbital, the arm catch, the eye pop, and then to the other side. Just go straight back to the other side, Bruce Lee triangle, two orbitals, under the arm, squeeze, create some tension, pop it in their face, Bring it to the other side. Just practice each one of these independently. Yeah, and you're gonna be impressive too, Hank. You just gotta grab yours and get going. I'll see you, I will do uh, the lifesaver. I might do double bladed, which is like a staff, or I might do single blade, which is more like the katana and then the Chinese Dao, because you're doing both striking and the Japanese style, but then also, which one? You want the uh, uh, single lightsaber or double? And I'll make it for you, Isaac. Single or double? Yeah, the nunchucks are such a great weapon. Um, and all this cross body stuff keeps your brain young, keeps your brain uh, flexible and elastic. All right, so we'll do single. I love doing single. I'll give this shoulder a rest. See you in a minute.